Right. Morning, everyone. Feels very cold in here, so we need to like get up and do jumping jacks. All right. So um, I want to talk about today um, a new proof technique. So. Uh, way back when, we kind of made a list of um, you know, all the different kinds of uh, propositions that we could write down, and for each kind of, you know, for and, or, implies, for all, all these kinds of things, we said, well, here are some ways that you can prove statements of this form. Um, but there's one more that I promised that we're going to do, and we're going to do that today. So this is, this is called induction. And this is another way to prove for all statements. So this is a, another technique. Okay. Uh, the only proof technique that we knew for proving statements of the form for all something um, was that we just say, well, suppose we have an arbitrary thing, and then we'll prove it you know, with, without assuming anything about that. Um, but we'll see there's some kind of for all statements where that really doesn't work at all, um, and we need something else. So um, so suppose that we have a proposition, or a, I should say a predicate. Uh, on natural numbers, uh, you know, P of N, and uh, you know, we want to prove that for all natural numbers N, P of N. Okay, so P represents some property that a natural number could have or not. And we want to show that actually every natural number has this property. Um, you know, for example, uh, well, I'll do, we'll, we'll do some examples later. Um, you know, well, maybe like P is N is greater than or equal to zero. That's obviously true for all natural numbers. We would not need, need induction to prove that. We just say, well, let n be an arbitrary number. Every number is greater than equal to zero. So, I mean, I guess we just kind of know that. Um, but we'll see examples later of more complicated propositions where um, uh, that would not be good enough. Okay. Um, so let me say that is uh, we want to prove all the propositions. Um, we can't literally prove uh, every single one by hand, right? Because there's infinitely many. Um, so we can't prove all of them individually. So, um, but Here's something we could do. Imagine arranging them in a chain like this. Uh, so I'm going to write the same list of them, but I'm going to put an arrow in between each pair. And this arrow, this really means implies, just like usual. 
So the idea is, if we can show that, first of all, that P0 is true, and if we can also show that, you know, uh, each one will imply the next one, right? So we show that, you know, P2 implies P3, and P3 implies P4, and P4 implies P4. If, if each one always implies the next one, and if P0 is true, then, well, P0 implies P1, and that implies P2, and that implies P3, and uh, so I'll be true. So the goal is to prove P0 and prove that each uh, PK implies Sometimes I like to think of it like a big chain of dominoes. If you've ever set up dominoes, uh, you know, and knock them over. If you haven't, you should. It's fun. But uh, so showing that each one implies the next one, that's like making sure that you set up the dominoes in such a way that each one is close enough to knock down the next one. Right? So if this one falls, then that one's going to fall too. And then proving P0, that's what, you know, when you're ready, when, when you have them all set up, you push over that first one. And then they all fall down. The only difference is, well, you can't have infinitely many dominoes in the real world, but um, it's a similar concept. So it's like knocking down a chain of dominoes. And uh, formally, let me write down what, I mean, every, the same thing that we've said, but I'm just going to write it down now in formal logical notation. Okay? So this says uh, P0 and, uh, right, so that's that first step, P0. And then also, we want to say something about each one will knock down the next one, right? Each one will imply that the next one is true. So that's actually a for all statement. Because I want to say, for any k, pk will imply pk plus 1, no matter what k is. Right, so I need to say, for all k, which are natural numbers, pk implies pk plus 1. Okay, so if p0 is true and uh, for all k, for every k, pk implies pk plus 1, then um, we can conclude that this property p is true for every natural number. So for all natural numbers n, pn is true. showing that P0 implies P1, right? But just because P0 implies P1, that doesn't mean P0 is true. It's just like, well, if it was true, then P1 would also be true, but we don't know if it is. Um, right, if purple cows can fly, then, you know, I ate, I ate pizza for breakfast, but it's a true statement, but that doesn't mean purple cows can fly. That answer your question? Yeah. yeah. It's the same reason that like it's not enough to set up all the dominoes. You also need that step of like knocking over the first one to get them to all the other questions? around with uh, 
1 plus 3 is 4. If I add up the first three odd numbers, I get uh, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9. Nine plus seven more is sixteen, right? Um, maybe you've seen this pattern before. I don't know, but it, if you haven't, does anyone notice a pattern here? Okay. They're all perfect squares. They're all perfect squares, right? Um, and that's like, hmm, that seems suspicious, right? What if you know? Let's do one more and just see if uh, the next perfect square should be twenty-five. So. 16 plus 9 is indeed 25, right? So you might say, hmm, curious. Maybe this is true. This is always true. Maybe when you add up a bunch of odd numbers, you're always going to get like the next square. Um, and so uh, if that's true, that's something we would want to show you know, that all natural numbers have certain properties. Um, so our conjecture is that adding up first uh, n odd numbers uh, yields, uh, well, let's see, the first two odd numbers give two squared, the first three odd numbers give three squared. So it looks like adding up the first n odd numbers will give us n squared. That's our conjecture. Uh, Let's see if we can write this slightly more formally. So, uh, so that is uh, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot dot dot. Let's see, if n is uh, when n is 2, the last odd number would be Right, if n is 2, this is going to be 4 minus 1 is 3. That would be the last odd number 3. When n is 3, this will be 5. Um, so I think the, the nth odd number is going to be 2n minus 1. Uh, and we think that's equal to n squared. So uh, we want prove for all natural numbers n, pn, where pn means, quote, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2n minus 1 equals n squared, end quote. Um, I put this in quotes because uh, otherwise it might be a little confusing. Like I have an equals here and there's an equals here. Um, but I'm not, it's not like three things that are equal. I'm saying I'm defining what PN means. PN is defined to be the proposition that 1 plus 3 plus 5 dot 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 2 minus 1 equals N squared. I guess you could maybe put it in parentheses or something if you want. But. And I recommend, I mean, we wouldn't have to explicitly define a proposition named P. We could just directly say for all N, 1 plus 3 plus 5 and blah, blah, blah equals n squared. Um, I like doing this, and I strongly recommend that you do this, um, because it, it helps you to look back at, you know, for example, at this or, or at this, and think about, OK, wait. I can think about this abstractly in terms of whatever proposition p is, and then I can go back and say, you know, OK, well, what is my specific p in this case? Oh, it's this statement. Um, so I think it kind of helps to keep track of what you're doing. Um, when you give that proposition a name. A uh, couple things to before we actually start trying to write a proof. Um, one thing is, uh, is this really true for all n? Or like, do we really think it's true for all n? What, what might we worry about? Yeah, we might worry about zero because 
my examples here, I didn't act, I just said like the first, you know, the first one odd number, the first two odd numbers, three, four, but well, zero is a natural number too. So, is this actually true? Like, does this make sense to, to say? Does it make sense to say the sum of the first zero odd numbers is zero squared? I think that kind of does make sense actually, right? Because if I add up no things, I get zero. If I add up zero things, I should get zero, and then zero squared. So. Yeah, sure. It's true for zero also. Um, you know, maybe I could add another line, another row up here, where I just say like, you know, blank equals zero. Or something. That's a little hard to write because I'm like adding up no things. But. Um, the other thing to just remark is, you know, what would go wrong if we tried to? So we're trying to prove it for all. If we use the technique that we knew before, where we just say, well, let n be an arbitrary number, uh, and then I have to prove this, well, I, like, I don't know where we would go from there. If I just say, I don't know, I'm not assuming anything about n, it's just some number, and I have to prove, you know, that this is true, it's like, well, I, like, I'm, I kind of have it doesn't feel like I've made any progress, because uh, it really seems to depend on, you know, what, like I can, I can, for a specific n, I can check, I can kind of like do that formula and see if it's true, but I don't know how to argue that it's true kind of in general for any n, no matter what it is, um, without using some more, some more structure of the natural numbers. So, um, uh, I should mention, sorry, I should have mentioned this before. Um, this is called uh, the base case. You'll often see people use these kinds of terms for groups by induction. Um, and this whole thing is called the you know, induction step or the induction case. And then also this thing in particular um, Right, and you'll you'll see when we get to this. You know, we say, all right, let's have an arbitrary k, and I have to prove that p k implies p k plus one. And the way that I do that, of course, is I assume p k. I say, suppose p k is true, then I have to prove p k plus one. This thing that I get to suppose is called the induction hypothesis. We'll talk about that more, and we also, we often abbreviate that I H. If you ever see me write I H, or you see someone else write I H, that's what it means. Okay. Um, so, uh, proof. We'll say that we're going to prove this by induction. First of all, well, I have two things I have to prove. If I'm going to prove by induction, right? Um, so first of all, that's a sensible thing to do because the thing I'm trying to prove is indeed of this form, right? Um, this is one thing that sometimes I see students do where they, they say, oh, let's do a proof by induction. But that only makes sense if the thing you're trying to prove is in fact, you know, for all, for all natural numbers, you know, some proposition. We'll, we'll get to, we'll talk about induction also works for things that aren't just natural numbers, but to start, we're just going to talk about that. Um, but if the thing you're trying to prove is like something and something, you can't use induction. You just prove an and. Then, uh, all right, so by induction, it makes sense. And I have, to, I have to prove two things, the base case, and then I have to prove this induction case. So the base case, um, the base case is P0 which means uh, you know, with the sum of the first zero natural number, or zero odd numbers. Is zero squared. Uh, check, that's true. Very often, not always, but very often, 
the base case is super easy. Because it's just like, oh, you put zero in and it's just like, well, obviously this is true for zero. Um, it's often something really simple. Uh, the induction case is usually the more interesting part. Okay, well, what do I have to prove in the induction case? I have to prove a for all. Um, I'm not going to use induction for that because that would be a little silly. Um, ideally, I can just use the, the other technique we already know about for proving for all. They just say, all right, I don't, I don't care what k is, I'm just going to let it be an arbitrary number. And then I'm going to suppose p of k is true, and then I have to show p of k plus 1 is true. And that somehow I have to use p of the fact that p of k is true to help me show p of k plus 1. Okay, so we're going to say um, let k be an arbitrary uh, natural number. Suppose P of K, that is, um, suppose, well, what does P of K say? It says that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2K minus 1 equals K squared. doing, I have, I have my definition of p, is p of n equals this, I'm just putting in different things for n, right, so here I put in k in place of n, and here I just, I put in k plus 1 in place of n. Um, I'm out of space, let's go to the next page. Actually, you know what, is there a way, what there is, Like, I don't, I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that I can, it can show me, like, the next page right under this one so that I can scroll and you can actually still see this and the next page from the same time. But I don't... So I'm just I'm going to start with this here, and I'm going to do a bunch of steps and hopefully get to k plus one squared. So, and the goal, my kind of meta goal here, is I want to be able to use my assumption that, that p of k is true. Um, that's my goal. So if I can get this into a form where I can use this fact, um, that will be good. So the first thing I'm going to do is just simplify this a little bit. So this is just uh, 2k plus 2 minus 1. So plus 2 minus 1 is the same as plus 1. Um, so this is just um, Now one thing that uh, we can note at this point is that I'm adding up a whole bunch of odd numbers, I'm starting at 1, and I'm adding all the odd numbers up to 2k plus 1. Uh, What's the odd number that comes right before 2k plus 1? Okay, 2k minus 
minus one, right? So just two less. Um, so, uh, like, and really, the two k, the previous odd number was al is already is kind of there implicitly in this dot dot dot. Right? I'm just going to write it explicitly. So it's already there. I'm not adding anything. Um, uh, so two k minus one plus two k plus one. We're just gonna like uh, list one more term of the dot 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 list. Does this make sense? I want to make sure everyone gets this because you look at that and it looks like, oh, how did you like? Where did that extra term come from? Why did you put an extra thing there? I'm not putting an extra thing in. It's already there. I'm just like choosing to write it explicitly instead of just leaving it inside the dot dot dot. Um, but why do that? Well, because look at this. You see this thing here, right? That's what I've assumed something. I've assumed that uh, that is equal to k squared. And that makes sense, right? Because I said, all right, pk is saying something about the sum of the first k odd numbers. I want to now show something about the first k plus 1 odd numbers. So the first k plus 1 odd numbers is the first k odd numbers plus one more odd number. So, so this uh, is equal to k squared plus 2k plus 1. And this is because of our induction hypothesis. Well, k squared plus 2k plus 1, we can factor that as uh, k plus 1 squared. So this is just some more algebra. Um, but we're done, because that's what we wanted to show, right? We had to show that this thing is equal to k plus 1 squared. Um, so, or I can say, uh, uh, therefore, if I want to, I can say my induction. I mean, you're not, you're, not, you're not required to write this sentence at the end. I mean, you, you, you started out by saying we're going to prove that, and then you say we're going to prove it by induction. And so when you do those two steps, the base case and the induction case, then your proof is done. But it can be nice just to kind of remind ourselves what it was that we were trying to show in the first place, what we've accomplished. So. Again, like big picture, just for some random n, there's no particular reason why I would know that this is true. But what I was able to do is to show that it's true for zero, and that if it's true for some n, I can always like take another step and show that it's also true for the next n, and therefore it's true for everything. And certainly in this case, because the, the statement we're trying to prove has like this dot, dot, dot in it, that itself kind of kind of suggests that maybe we'll, some kind of proof by induction will be helpful because the dot, dot, dot means like, well, you know, for any number of these things, it's like we can always, we can imagine always adding one more thing on. Um, but there are, there are certainly are things we can prove that don't have a dot, 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 or we can prove it by induction. So, um, which I think I'll do another example right now.
n factorial, right, means 1 times 2 times 3 times dot 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 times n, right, the product of all the numbers from odd to n. Um, and I want to prove something that tells me a little bit about, you know, uh, how big this gets. Um, let p of n be the statement that uh, 2 to the n is less than n factorial. Okay, so I want to claim something about that n factorial is bigger than 2 to the n. So that, that tells me something about how fast or how big that gets, or that it's actually bigger than 2 to the n. Um, So I could try to prove that this is that you know p of n is true for all n. Um, something a little funny happens though because actually it's not. Um, in particular, uh, you know p zero means uh, uh, two to the zero is less than zero factorial. What's two to the zero? One. One. Uh, what's zero factorial? Does anyone know? Adam? Uh, zero. Good guess. No. <laughs> so, uh, so n factorial means the product of the first n counting numbers. So zero factorial means we're we're not adding up and we're not sorry we're not multiplying any numbers at all. Um, and in fact, if you multiply nothing, you should get one. I think we talked about this. Um, so there is a good reason for it. Also, just like that's kind of how everyone defines it because it works out nicely. Yeah. Is this operating on the same principle as um, putting something to the power of zero? It is actually because, like, why is two to the zero one? It's because we're multiplying zero two zero times. Um, that's one, right? Yeah, good, good point. Very good point. Uh, well, but in any at any rate, one less than one is not true. So, uh, how about p one? That would say that uh, two to the one is less than one factorial, right? Which says two less than one, that's not true. Okay, so like why am I showing you this false thing? Uh, P2, is P2 true? Two squared, is that less than two factorial? Uh, what's two squared? Four. Or what's two factorial? Two, so no. How about P3? 2 cubed is less than 3 factorial. 2 cubed is 8. eight. 3 factorial is 6. six. Okay. Maybe we can prove that it's false for all n. How about P4? 2 to the 4th less than 4 factorial. 2 to the 4th is 2 times 8, 16. Does anyone know what 4 factorial would be? 24. 24. It's 4 times, the previous one was 6. That's 1 times 2 times 3. And if we multiply by 4, we get 24. Aha! So this one is actually true. Um, what about P5? Let's do one more. 2 to the 5th less than 5 factorial. 2 to the 5th is 32. 5 factorial is 24 times 5. Which is 120. Uh, and if you keep doing some examples, just intuitively, it seems like this this side is getting bigger, way faster than this side. And so we might reasonably suspect that from this point onwards, uh, it's always going to be true. But it's not true for like these numbers. Um, 
So there's a couple things we could do at this point. So one thing we could do is we could just say, well, uh, I only know how to prove things of the form for all natural numbers. So I'm going to make my p of n say something like, you know, 2 to the n plus 4 is less than n plus 4 factorial. And then when n is 0, it's really talking about 4. And when n is 1, it's really talking about 5. Um, you, we can do that. That's kind of annoying, though. Um, much better is, like, the principle of induction really still applies in this situation. If, if I can show that, you know, p4 implies p5, and p5 implies p6, and everything implies the next number from there on, and I can prove that p4 is true, then it's going to be true for 4 and upwards. Um, so we can basically generalize the idea of induction a little bit and just say, well, okay, you don't have to start at 0. You just have to start somewhere. Um, and as long as it's, you know, we can show that it's true from then on up. So we can generalize induction uh, a little bit to start you know, at some number uh, other than zero. Right, so it would say something like uh, uh, if P B, B for base case, if P B is true, and uh, for all K uh, greater than or equal to B, P K implies P K plus 1. Right, so instead of saying for all natural numbers, I just say, well, for every natural number that's you know, P or bigger. Um, so then, for all n, which is greater than or equal to b, does that make sense? Really, all we've changed is that we're not starting at zero anymore. We're just concerned with numbers from b on up. But other than that, it like uh, it works the same way. So uh, let's uh, let's try proving. So I guess our claim then is, you know, for all n greater than or equal to four, uh, p of n, or p is, you know, this this thing. care what happens below 4. Right? I mean, maybe maybe pk implies pk plus maybe it doesn't, but I don't care because I'm not trying to prove anything about those numbers. Um, and suppose, this is our induction hypothesis, that uh, p of k, that is,
So this is my goal to show this. Uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to prove an inequality now. Right? But I can still use a similar technique where I start with 2 to the k plus 1, and then I can use a chain of steps. As long as each step uh, is uh, either less than or it could be equal to. That's okay because if I have like this is less than this, and then I have like equals, 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 and then another less than, right? Overall, the, the thing at the beginning is still going to be less than the thing at the end, right? So I can, I can never get, as long as I only get bigger or stay the same, then that'll be okay. I, can't, I can never get smaller. That's not allowed. Because I don't, if I get smaller, then I don't know how much smaller I got, and I, I kind of lose. So, uh, 2 to the k plus 1. Um, well, I want to be able to use my induction hypothesis, which is this. Um, so I say, well, I know something about 2 to the k, and 2 to the k plus 1 uh, is just 2 times 2 to the k. If I take out a 2, and I have 2 to the k left, right, so this is equal to 2 times 2 to the k. Um, and by my induction hypothesis, right, I've assumed that 2 to the k is less than k factorial. So 2 times 2 to the k must be less than 2 times k factorial. So this is less than 2 times k factorial. So 2 to the k is less than k factorial. Right? And if I multiply both sides of an inequality by 2, if a is less than b, then 2a is less than 2b. Right? Alright, um, getting closer. My goal is to get k plus 1 factorial. Um, I have here k factorial. Um, if I multiply k factorial by k plus 1, that gives me k plus 1 factorial. Because right? k factorial is one multiplying 1 all the way to k. And if I do one more thing, k plus 1, that's k plus 1 factorial. Um, can I replace the 2 by k plus 1? Is that OK? Be OK. Remember, I only ever want things to get bigger, or they can stay the same. So the question really is, if I just change this 2 into a k plus 1, which is kind of what I want, will that make this bigger? Yes? Why? Because the k has to be greater than 4. Right. So this is the key, this is the key point. In general, no. Like if 2, if I replace 2 by something plus 1, like what if k was 0? Then it would get smaller, right? Um, but k can't be 0. We assumed like k is greater than or equal to 4. So we don't care about those numbers. So I can say this is less than k plus 1 times k factorial. I can say 2 is less than k plus 1 since k is greater than equal to 4. Um, well, that's just equal to k plus 1 factorial. This is just the definition of factorial. And, you know, hence 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial. Thus, by induction, 2 to the n is less than n, uh, what's right, n factorial for all n greater than or equal to 4.
So I've tried to be you know, very careful about both kind of defining what the predicate P is that we're that we're using, um, and then also being careful about saying, okay, here's the base case, here's the induction step. What exactly are we doing in the induction step? Um, feel free. I mean, the reason I'm doing this, right, is that so you can use this kind of as a template. Um, so definitely feel free to kind of try to emulate this when I, you know, when you're writing proofs by induction. Um, experienced mathematicians would certainly write a lot less than this. Um, but um, certainly when you're first learning about proofs by induction. The thing about proofs by induction, so notice how there's like a for all inside of some parentheses, you know, inside of an and and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot that we've done so far that's had for alls nested inside of other things. And that, uh, it definitely requires, um, there's something about that, that that requires a little bit more abstract thinking, or it's like a couple more levels of, uh, it, it becomes even more important to kind of make sure you're keeping track of what what you're doing, what you what you've assumed, what you're trying to show. Um, but um, you know, but I think again, looking at looking at something like this can help. And that's right. That's also why I've written it out uh, formally. A lot of times, if you if you look up some you know something explaining how to do proofs by induction, they won't write this down. They'll just say, oh well, you prove the base case, you assume the hypothesis, and then you show this. Um, but I think it's easy to get confused. Um, so ideally, if you, right now that we've practiced thinking about and using this notation, that can actually help you to be precise and to keep track of what you're trying to do. All right. Um, I will see you all on Wednesday. Dividing by zero is not the same as not dividing at all. Well, like you're not dividing into any proof. Think about what division means. Like you're having some value and not dividing it into any proof. No, dividing means. Uh, it's not a big deal. I don't know. I, know I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, let me think.